I thought I'd experiment with another angle, um, but then it does mean shouting at the laptop. Um, but uh, given that night has disappeared, um, uh, I thought I'd try something new. Um, uh, so here we are. Um, I want to talk about book covers. Now, for some of you who know about my literary prize that I just launched, um, submissions have been coming in, and uh, the writing has been variable, I have to admit. Um, uh, some of it has been great, some of it uh, not so much. Uh, but the covers have been appalling, or most of the covers have been appalling. Um, now, obviously, there is this old adage, you can't um, judge a book by its cover. Um, but you can judge the publisher by the kind of cover they decide to give to the books based on um, how they feel they're going to attract the readership. Um, so I think covers are important. And uh, when I publish my novel next year, I will be paying a lot of attention to um, the cover. Um, and uh, certainly, um, I have strong views. Um, but the key thing, I think, for covers is less is more. Um, and the reason for that is, is that, and I've done this in a lot of research in my kind of regular job, is that the, if you have to, if you, the more you do with a cover, the chances are the more barriers you will put in place, the more barriers to purchase. You're, you're looking for triggers to purchase. You're looking for to put little clues and cues into your cover that make you think, I want to buy that. Now, actually double-guessing what is that thing, what that trigger is, means that you are more likely to fill it with barriers. Um, and certainly a lot of the covers that I've been looking, I've looked at through the submissions, um, and I'm not going to share them with you because that would be unfair on the uh, prizes, and um, we are not judging the covers in terms of the prizes, um, uh, and every novel is getting read. Um, but some of them are awful. Um, but anyway, and I was thinking, how you know, is there a kind of analogous um, situation to covers? And I decided that Yes, there is. I'm going to sit down for this. Um, I started thinking about why people wear suits to, be, to, to, to meetings, to businesses. Why businesses, why people wear business suits, male and female. Um, and one imagines it's convention and formality and those kind of things. Um, but I'm not so sure. Um, I think it's because... It's much harder for people to make decisions about you. And therefore, one is forced to make decisions about the content of what someone is saying. But equally, the triggers and marries issue comes into play. Because when I go out to a meeting, if, I, if I'm not going to wear a suit, I have to give it an awful amount of thought of what I am going to wear. I have to make choices. Um... And those choices, I'm going to, essentially I'm trying to make choices that are going to trigger people to like what I say or, um, you know, buy my business or be convinced of my argument. Um, but equally, you know, I make choices where people, I walk into a meeting, if I'm not in a suit, I'm in something else. People basically make, one runs the risk of people making decisions um, against you. Whereas in a suit, actually people just go, he's wearing a suit, he's wearing a shirt, maybe wearing a tie, whatever. It takes an astute observer of couture to work out whether the suit is any good or not, because everyone can buy a half-decent suit these days. Um, uh, in the UK, there's a lot of you know, reasonably well-made shoes. Um, uh, same with shirts. I mean, it takes a it takes an, an astute observer to, to 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 spot that one suit is better, you know, by ten percent, or the shirt is made from Italian cotton, or in this instance, my watch, which is a very beautiful watch, is a nineteen sixties 
Omega Constellation pan face watch, which is extremely rare. People have done it, but um, uh, but really they're just going man in a suit. Actually, probably man in a suit with long hair. Um, but man in a suit, what's he talking about? And quite frankly, the reason I have long hair is to slightly disrupt that. Um, because I'm much more comfortable with people being annoyed by me and irritated by me than I am. I quite like to go into battle, um, which is not really a good thing, but, you know, whatever. Um, but anyway, I, I, I'm probably um, um, I'm probably moving off topic somewhat here. But it, my feeling is that if one is going to have a strong book cover, less is more... And if you're suddenly going on a kind of, you know, to a picture library to kind of sum up what um, what uh, what the book what, what might represent the book, you're just it's on a hiding to nothing. Um, um, actually, no, I was going to do something about it. So, so um, first, I'm going to show you what I think is my favourite cover of all time, um, and it is it's a wonderfully designed cover. Um, it's a large book, and it's Harold Brodke's The Runaway Soul. And that is just beautiful design. Um, you know, it's, it's, I don't even know what it's saying. It's just basically saying we really care about this. It says the name is big and Harold Brodke was big. It's just, it's just beautiful design. It would, and if you, and it's a large one. It also has, just so you know, uh, and I can't work out this, the, the most lovely, ah, I'm probably not going to see this, I want to really get close, it has, no, nope, has it worked, just the loveliest font, the loveliest, delicate, most delicate font. Um, and that's, um, um, oh, my Skype is going, uh, one second. Sorry if there was an edit there, the first of none. I don't plan to anymore, but I had a Skype call. I point the Skype call, as it turns out. Um, okay, so going back to covers, I've shown you my favourite Harold Brocky cover, or my favourite cover. Uh, I could show you loads of other really terrible covers. But my 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 point is here is is covers that are very minimalist. So here is the Galley Beggar cover, the Bible Black. It's just the name, the title, and a quote. That's a beautiful cover. Or Fitzcarraldo. Now it's interesting, I really love the Fitzcarraldo. I mean, I, I particularly like um, uh, the insides, but but actually I noticed the other day I was in a bookshop and there were a lot of Fitzcarraldo books. They don't, they don't, they don't, it, they don't quite, even amongst very noisy covers, they don't quite jump off the shelf in the way that, that these do. Um, but I just, but I do like very plain covers. Um, and the Bible Black is particularly nice, I think. Um, and who wouldn't want to be published, especially you know with a with a with a with a, with a matching colour? Well, this is red, but it looks orange in this light. As I look orange, I haven't sort of started spending all my time in sunbed, turning myself into Donald Trump. Um, uh, but I came across this. So it's got nothing to cover. This is about margins. Um, this is a story by Donald um, Bartlemy. Is that how it's pronounced? I don't know. Um, and it's, it's a really lovely story. It's just a few passages, about one paragraph. And essentially, there is a man explaining to another man um, who has a who has a, a kind of begging sign. Um, He's standing on 13th Street in New York, I think set in the 60s or something, and he's got a begging sign. And this guy's gone up to him to talk to him about his begging sign. And it starts, this is how it starts. Edward was explaining to Carl about margins. The width of the margin shows culture, aestheticism, and a sense of values or lack of them, he said. A very wide margin, sorry, a very wide left margin shows an impractical person of culture and refinement with a deep appreciation for the best in art and music. Whereas, Edward said, quoting his handiwork analysis book, whereas narrow left margins show the opposite. No left margin at all shows a practical nature, a wholesome economy, 
and a general lack of good taste in the arts. A very wide right margin shows a person afraid to face reality, oversensitive to the future and generally a poor mixer. Um, as you can see here, sorry, God, very bad lighting, I apologise here. Lovely, lovely margins on um, Fitzcarraldo books. And lovely margins in Gallibega. Not quite as wide margins, so not quite as aesthetically predisposed as um, uh, as Fitzcarraldo, but the, but when Fitzcarraldo books get wide because they're narrower, yes, we're getting into we're getting into minutiae here. They are they are narrower. See, wider, narrower. When you get to very thick books, um, they actually become quite difficult to read because um, of the narrowness. Anyway, blah 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 blah. Where are we? Um, yes, um, terrible covers and great covers. Um, that's it really. Uh, Sorry for rambling. I haven't actually been very well over the weekend and my mind is uh, a little like um, pudding laced with rum. Um, or in fact bourbon, which is probably is actually, my brain is probably laced with bourbon. Um, which is what I'm going to go and do now. Um, Alright, many thanks. Um, Bye.